So today we are going to be reviewing the Hapy travel tripod. And I'm sure by now you've seen a campaign for this tripod. It is a super modern travel tripod with some pretty cool features, including two tripods in one. KP was awesome enough to send me this tripod to test out and do a review for you guys. In terms of what's included in the main tripod that you purchase, obviously you have the tripod with the ball head and the inner tripod and the main tripod. The spikes are in the feet. They just turn out. You have a quick release plate. This is another quick release plate that you can get depending on the package. And you get a premium travel sling for the tripod. Pretty nice, it's got Hapy written on it, black on black, and uh, this is weatherproof. I've gotten several free bags with cheaper tripods, and uh, it's always just a cheap canvas bag, but this is actually really nice. And you get a small rat terrier dog with purchase. No, you don't. And lastly, you get some tools, which you can use to add the quick plate to your camera and make other adjustments on the tripod, including removing the clicking sound, etc. And with that being said, let's head to my studio where we will take a close up look at this tripod and all the features. And after that, we are going to do some street photography. So let's get into it. One of the coolest features about this tripod is it has a fast deployment method. Each leg has its own quick release clamp. If you're really good, you can release them all at once, pull the leg down, simply close the tripod all together and you can tighten each level of leg all at once in one twisting motion. It takes a bit to get good at this, and I'm not there just yet, but with some practice, you can deploy this super fast. With the legs fully extended, the tripod is at 49 inches, and if you need more height, you can release the center lock and raise up the sub tripod to get a max height of 59 inches. And in case you are wondering, the height of the tripod when it's fully collapsed with the sub tripod is 17 and a half inches tall. And of course the process is reversed to shorten the tripod. Just basically unrelease all of the leg clamps and collapse the leg. And again, if you're really good, you can close them all at once and make it a pretty speedy process. And once it's collapsed, I am just basically popping this into my camera bag for demonstration purposes, and it takes up a pretty small footprint. So this camera comes with a super small mounting plate. Simply screw it in by hand first, and then once it's semi-tight and in position, tighten it with the Allen key they gave you or with a screwdriver. And it's pretty, pretty low profile. The head is also, you know, pretty low profile. And just to demonstrate here without the camera, it just simply snaps right in when it's in place and you just tighten it. So showing you with the camera, the mounting process is super fast. And once it's snapped on, just turn it to lock it. There are two types of adjustments on the ball head. There is a knob, which lets you rotate the ball head in a horizontal plane. Rotating this horizontally also has a clicking sound by default that indicates a turn. The next adjustment is a lever, which once you undo it, it lets you freely rotate the ball head as need. And as you can see here, I just put my GFX on it. And if you rotate it due to the click, you may get your camera to bounce a little bit. However, you can also turn this clicking off with an Allen key, and then it just simply has a smooth rotation. As you would expect, there is a vertical mode to this tripod as well. Just simply turn the lever to release the ball and put the camera into the notch, and then you will be in portrait mode. Another option that you have is to take out the center column or tripod and put it in reverse, and that lets you get a low angle to the ground. And now to get into my favorite part, simply unscrew or loosen the center column locking ring, and then you can take out the sub tripod. And this tripod just goes ultra low to the ground, if you want it to go that low. And here they are standing together just to see a size comparison. Just like a normal tripod, you can adjust the sub tripod's leg in a few different increments, depending on the height that you would like. And of course, the camera just pops right on. One thing that I would recommend is once you have your camera on, 
and you're ready to take your picture, just push down on the, the legs a little bit so that there is no give, so that they're already fully lowered to the ground, and then you'll be ready to take your picture. And what's pretty cool is that once you take out the sub tripod, the ball head is already attached, so you're pretty much ready to go. And of course, the same uh, types of adjustments work on the ball head when it's on the sub tripod as when it's on the main tripod. If you want to separate the sub tripod from the main tripod, the process is pretty simple. Simply unscrew the ball head, and just to show you, there is a quarter inch input on the bottom, just like any other tripod head. Now, you just simply unscrew the center column, pull out the sub tripod, unscrew the center column, and you can see there is a magical quarter inch screw attached to the main set of tripod legs. And now all you have to do is align the ball head and the input screw and attach. And just to talk about the main tripod, they have the legs have three adjustment angles. And as you can see demonstrated here, you just simply unclick the knob at the top and you can adjust your tripod. As you can see, the main tripod head is pretty low, especially compared to most tripods. And here is the sub tripod next to it, just to show you how much lower that goes. And since the tripod has a standard quarter inch thread, you can attach other ball heads as well. This Manfrotto one screws right on without any issues. If the knobs get in the way, you can unscrew the center thread and remove that. What's pretty cool is that if you have an extra ball head, you can basically have two tripods working at the exact same time. And here you can see the two right next to one another. If you remove the sub tripod, you can attach a sandbag to the hook in the middle. This is a little bit of a challenge to connect because the hook is very short. That is an option as well. There are also several quarter inch accessory holes on the tripod that you can access when the tripod has the sub tripod on it and also without it as well. And one cool feature, there are spikes built into the feet on this tripod. So simply unscrew the rubber ends and unscrew the, the spike that is built in. And you can see there are two ends. One is the spike, one is a screw. And you just have to simply screw it in in reverse the way that you took it out. Then you have a spike foot. Simply take that and screw it back into the tripod and repeat for all the other sides. And now if you are in a rugged area, you can just basically jam that tripod into the ground. And lastly, one of the coolest features is the hidden cell phone mount. Simply pull it up from the ball head and attach your phone to it. It will fit pretty much any cell phone, unless it's like some sort of small tablet and it's pressure fit. So you don't have to worry about the phone popping out. So we've gone over all the features. Now let's put this tripod into action on the street. So I'm at the entrance to Fort Greene Park and I am just going for a pretty low shot. I'm just extending the legs out a little bit, um, not going hyper low with the sub tripod and taking an HDR shot. So this is what we came up with, just a shot of the main entrance. And then I moved in a bit further, putting on the 50 millimeter lens and repeating the same thing. For a shot like this, I would typically use a pretty wide lens, but this is all we have for now. And of course the tripod held up perfectly as expected. Next we're headed to the top of the park. All I did was just simply collapse the tripod, grab it, walk around with it, head to the top. And it's just so light and compact that it's really no burden whatsoever to walk around with. We made it to the top and it's just so easy and quick to deploy this tripod. So I set up my shot and added the ND filter and simply snapped the shot. Super easy, super quick, hyper sharp, no movement. It was a little windy too. So this tripod is very stable as we've discussed. 
After that shot, I wanted to do a sub tripod shot. All I did was simply pop out the tripod with my camera still on it, walk over to this column, line it up and take the shot. It's really one of the craziest features of this tripod and it just makes it so much more versatile to use than all the other tripods. And once I'm done with that shot, again, tri camera still on the tripod, I can just walk over, pop it back in and then fully collapse the tripod from there and move on to the next spot. For this next shot, I wanted to really test out the stability. I extended the legs fully and I put my GFX with the 110, my largest lens, on the ball head, on a downward slope. I put on my ND filters and took the multi shots to do an HDR photo. So multiple long exposure shots. And here is the result. Jumping to another day, here I am at Hudson Yards in Manhattan and we are doing another long exposure HDR shot and I am shooting the vessel, which is still closed in case you're wondering. So here I just have the tripod at its most compact state, just the legs ex extended one level and the shots are coming out cool. I think I just left the camera on the tripod and just walked around. I just wanted to do a close up shot of the vessel. Here the camera is pointed pretty heavily upward. I extended the sub tripod a little bit and took the shot. And lastly, we are at Midtown taking some pictures of these big holiday ornaments. And here I switched up the tripod a lot. This is the third or fourth picture I took. And I just have the tripod extended a little bit. Before this shot, I was using the sub tripod. And after the shot, switched back to the sub tripod. I really love how low this tripod goes when using the sub tripod. It's super stable, and as you can see here, the picture came out super sharp and looks pretty good. My final thoughts, I think this is a really awesome tripod. I did a ton of research on tripods. I, If you've been following along on my channel and all my GFX reviews, I have basically been using a pretty basic tripod with a Manfrotto ball head, and it got the job done, but the legs were just, you know, pretty basic and I was really in dire need of an upgrade. So I, I did a ton of research and I stumbled upon this tripod and all the features looked really awesome. But you know, in looking at Indiegogo campaigns, GoFundMe and all that, um, you just never know uh, how the quality is gonna be until you start looking at reviews or of course just buy it and, and you know, buy it on the whims. My favorite feature is definitely the ultra low mini tripod. I could personally see just traveling around doing street photography and only bringing that tripod. That's how awesome it is. It's really strong, very sturdy. I did test out a handful of shots and I had no issues. In doing long exposure, you are gonna inevitably come up with some blurry shots due to wind and people walking close to you and all that type of stuff, things you can't control. But I found that to be honest, this is just a really sturdy tripod. I am just really excited to have a tripod that goes ultra low to the ground. Before the, my GFX days, uh, when I was shooting primarily on an X-H1, um, my favorite street photography lens is probably the 8 to 16, maybe the 50 to 140, but for this purpose, the 8 to 16, I would go super low and super wide, and I love that field of view, uh, hyper low to the ground. And I just was not able to replicate that with all my long exposure and HDR shots. But with this tripod, you can go ultra low. And to me, that is probably my favorite feature. And you of course have many other features like the cell phone attachment that's just built in. Um, you don't have to unscrew anything and pop it in. It's just literally slide it right up. Super easy to strap your phone onto the tripod. Um, stuff like that's really cool. Everything, like I mentioned, is just really engineered well and pretty strong. So the legs are super sturdy. As you saw in many of my street photography shots, I had the tripod fully extended, at least with the legs, and even pointed downward and had no issues. On that downward shot, it was with the GFX 100S and the 110, which is a pretty heavy lens. Also, the GFX 100 is a pretty heavy camera, body alone. So this tripod handled it exceptionally well. For me personally, with how heavy the GFX is on its own, um, typically when I'm traveling around street photography, I'm always bringing two lenses. So I've got the GFX body, two lenses, and a backpack, 
it's a it always is a pretty heavy setup. So I'm definitely really happy that this is a ultra light tripod. It just really does get really heavy walking around pretty quickly into my street photography journeys. So that's a really awesome thing. I also love how easy and fast it is to open up this tripod. As you saw a few times throughout this video, the legs uh, have a quick release and they extend very quickly. So that's cool as well. Also, just to be completely transparent, like I mentioned in the intro, Hapy did send me this tripod for free to review for you guys in exchange for a video. The agreement was not to give a positive review in exchange for a video. It was quite simply to just mention the features of the tripod and make a video. So I personally would absolutely recommend this tripod if I had tried out this tripod and knew what I knew now before I even had a deal with them, I would have purchased a tripod on its own. The price point is perfect at $400 MSRP, although you can get it, I think for 320 or 340 right now, depending on when you're watching this video with the Indiegogo campaign. And the quality is absolutely insane. So while this tripod is exceptionally awesome, there are just a few super minor things that I wanna bring up the hook on the bottom, which you can only use if you do not have the inner tripod, otherwise you can't really access it. Um, the hook is kind of hard to use. Um, if you're using a standard sandbag, it's gonna have a pretty wide uh, strap on the top, which you kind of have to bend and finagle it's, it into this, this little small area to use the hook. So. That would be one thing, which is not really that big of a deal to me because I really don't use sandbags on travel tripods in the studio. Yes, on the street, not really. Another thing that it might just be me, might be user error, but I found that when you have the inner tripod on or with or not even on, I found that sometimes when collapsing the legs, the hook will get in the way and you have to reposition the hook slightly to be able to close the legs. It might be me, it might be user error, but it may just point back to that hook being a little bit weird. This, although, is not really any sort of problem. It's just a suggestion. I think this is such an innovative tripod and there's so much thought and creativity that went into it. But I think one thing that would be pretty cool is, so in order to attach this plate, you need a tool. And instead of having just a random Allen key, hex key, whatever to, to walk around with um, in your bag, what if they put the, the tool on a keychain so that you could just simply add it to your keys or attach it to something. I think that would be a super clever idea and just make it so that uh, it would just be one less thing that you would have to worry about. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much. Give this video a like. If you're not following me, please consider subscribing. It would help me out a ton as I'm trying to grow this channel. And with that being said, stay tuned for some more GFX content. I have some videos coming out, specifically the 45 versus the 50 millimeter lens, which is the best to choose, and a review on the 23 millimeter that I have had cooking for quite some time. So stay tuned. And with that being said, I'll catch you in the next video.